Uh, prostate cancer that's metastatic is incurable. Uh, patients can get benefit from hormone therapies for a period of one to three years, sometimes longer. Uh, the side effects of those therapies are emasculation, which is very disconcerting to the men who have to take it. Uh, chemotherapies do very little for prostate cancer. Some uh, mild prolongation of survival measured in weeks to months. But all of these patients who have metastatic prostate cancer will die. 28,000 per year, roughly now, dying from metastatic prostate cancer. I want to cure this cancer, and a lot of people would like to see it cured. But in order to do that, we're going to have to go beyond the current ways of treatment that are being used in the clinic. So it's going to have to be something new and very different, and I'm proposing designer T-cells as a pathway to that answer. Now, why T-cells? T-cells are the perfect killing machine. T-cells, however, evolved not to kill cancer cells, but to kill virus-infected cells. So just try this. Yeah. And what I'm going to show you is just a very brief video clip of T-cell killing. Uh, this is a T-cell, a little guy down there, and that's a virus-infected cell influenza virus. You'll see in a second that this membrane is going to expand suddenly. It's an osmotic shock as perforins put holes in the, there we go. And now it's going to involute, there's going to be surface blebbing, uh, nucleus is going to dissolve, and over in a space of about, this is accelerating time, but this happens over a space of about 10 or 15 minutes. And so this T cell here is, has effectively killed that cell, and one T cell in the space of a day can kill 100 target cells. It's, um, so what, what are we going to do to use that power to fight, um, to fight cancer? So basically we have to fool, uh, T cells are tolerant to self, otherwise we'd have autoimmune disease all the time. Uh, so what we have to do is fool the T cells into thinking that the cancer has a virus infection. Cancer is basically is our, our own cells, and it's very rare that there's an immune response against it. Uh, so what we've done is we've approached the designer T-cell approach basically says, uh, takes, this is a T-cell receptor up here uh, dis displayed on the surface of a T-cell. It's a complex uh, set of molecules in which one is, this uh, pair here is responsible for detecting viral proteins. But what we have is, with cancer is we have antibodies that are relatively selective for particular cancers. And prostate's a good example with anti-prostate specific membrane antigen uh, antibody uh, we can detect this uh, uh, surface antigen prostate cancer. And by grafting genetically uh, the binding domain of the antibody onto zeta chain of the T cell receptor, we're able to redirect these T cells to uh, now designer T cells to attack the cancer based on the expression of this uh, PSMA antigen. And it's referred to as IGTCR or chimeric immune receptor as noted here. And we can actually detect which cells are modified in, in, vivo, uh, in vitro. We do retroviral gene transfer, but uh, right here, the red staining cells are genetically modified. The, the, stain, the red stain there is for the chimeric receptor, and, the un, and just the green cells are unmodified. So our phase one clinical protocol um, in prostate cancer uh, begins with T cell harvest from the patient. Uh, these little black spots represent metastatic disease sites. And uh, then we modify ex vivo uh, outside the body these T cells to have this chimeric receptor. And this is CD3 here versus chimeric immune receptor. This uh, section here in the upper right quadrant is a modified T cells. Uh, we counted to about 60% of this uh, patient cells that we took out were modified. And then we give non-myoblative conditioning with chemotherapy to knock down the bone marrow, to knock down the blood cells so that there's a space for these T cells to go into so that they have stimuli to expand to large numbers. And it, it, we infuse the T cells after creating that space and begin low dose uh, interleukin-2. It's an outpatient procedure. It's continuous infusion. And then we look for hematologic recovery. And you can actually see here that even after two weeks, you're seeing these are modified cells in the right upper quadrant. And, uh, and those will become a permanent part of the patient's um, uh, circulating blood cells. Uh, 
So what we're doing is this basic regimen with three dose levels and a dose escalation, 10 to the 9th, 10 to the 10th, and 10 to the 11th T cells. 10 to the 11th T cells like one cup packed solid with cells. So it's a lot of cells. <clears throat> um, and we have treated two patients at the lowest dose level presently. It's 10 to the 9th T cells. Um, uh, we have conditioning uh, from day minus 8 to day minus 2 with chemotherapy. T cells infused on day 0. And low-dose interleukin-2 goes for 28 days or longer um, <clears throat> uh, from the time of T-cell infusion. You'll see that the PSA, which is our uh, tumor marker for prostate cancer, it's a serum marker, uh, goes down 50% in this case, about 75% in this patient. Uh, the uh, T-cell treatment itself is well tolerated. Uh, higher doses to follow are 10 to the 10th, 10 to the 11th, and um, hoping instead of 50 or 75 percent PSA reductions, which I, I find unsatisfactory, that we'll get 100 percent. So, the final slide. <clears throat> Desire T cells. I propose these as a kind of brave new world for cancer therapies. These are, these are very different. These are not inert chemicals or molecules. These are living cells of the patient, miniature organisms, if you will, engineered or programmed to seek and destroy. You may even think of these as <clears throat> little nano biobots. I'm <laughs> not sure if that'll stick, but anyway. So <laughs> these T cells, these T cells, these T cells are being programmed, and we are just learning how to do this programming. Uh, whether this version of this is going to work, or we have to do other programming, I can't tell you for sure until we get through our trial. But we can program them to maintain or expand the drug in the presence of tumor only. The, the tumor itself will provide the, the stimulation. The drug should then disappear when all the tumor is eliminated. <clears throat> uh, ultimately, the cost is reasonable. Uh, it, this is a personalized therapy using the patient's own cells, but it's generalizable. We could treat thousands of patients with this. And is, it, and is this the future of immuno-oncology? I don't know. But I predict that the FDA will have approved one of these designer T-cell constructs, if not this one, some other one somewhere, uh, as standard therapy in the next five or so years. Thank you.